This video is the first video in a series of tutorials about cinematography and photorealism. And in this first episode, we're going to take a look at my favorite lighting setup. It's a very simple one-point lighting setup. We're going to build this entire scene, and then I'm going to talk about things I think are important for cinematography. So here we are in Blender version 3.1 and we're going to start off by deleting everything and let's go to Mixamo. We're going to use this model called YBot. Let me just disable myself here so you can see. We are choosing the look around animation. Yeah, so this is a cool animation and you can increase the character arm space just a little bit because it's clipping. So let's go ahead and click download and FBX is good and just download. So in Blender, let's go F4, import FBX and then find your motion capture, import. So here you can see you have the animated version in Blender. I realize I'm using this model for everything nowadays, but I just really like it. <laughs> let's create a ground plane. So shift A, let's create a plane. Let's scale this up a little bit and let's go to edit mode by pressing tab. And you can click and drag and select these two vertices behind here. And let's press E to extrude on the Z axis. So now we want to make this into a smooth studio backdrop. So let's go back to object mode and let's go to Modifier Properties, Add Modifier, Bevel. And then you can just increase the amount of this. Just go crazy and increase the segments. Let's move this back a little bit. Perfect. And then you can see all these little lines. So we want to right click and set the shading to smooth. So now we have a smooth studio backdrop. Let's actually scale this up on the X axis a little bit. And now let's create our camera. Shift A and let's create a camera. And I think this angle is quite good. So let's go view, align view, align active camera to view. So now our camera will see what we are seeing and you can press G to move the camera. And then let's press Z two times. We can move it back a little bit on the local Z axis. Let's enable the cycles render engine. Let's go to render properties and set the render engine to cycles. I'm gonna show you something cool. I got the windows power toys. So you can do it like this, press control two times and you can do this. So we're going to go to the render view. Boom. <laughs> is that annoying or is it good? I don't know. So we're in the render view and now you can see just this shadow is just automatically appearing here. And this is just the ambient occlusion that just works really nice in cycles. You can see with this ambient occlusion that this character is actually levitating a little bit. So let's select the bones and then let's move it a little bit down on the Z axis. It looks like it's standing on the ground. And then if you like, you can just go ahead and hide the bones because we don't need them anymore. So just select the armature and press H to hide. By the way, if you hold down Z, you can do this pie menu to just see render view right away. So you can just press Z and drag up, which is a really fast way to go to render view or solid or material. Okay, so now we're done with the boring part. Let's start focus on the lighting. And I want you to ask yourself, why are we adding light in this scene? Are we adding light because it's too dark? So we just need to see what's happening. So here is an interesting mindset that I would recommend that you try. Instead of thinking that I need to illuminate my scene, therefore I'm adding a light, try and think my scene needs shadows so I can emphasize the shape of this object. And once you start thinking that, it's incredibly easy to just place the light. So let's first start with the first mindset. My scene is too dark, I need to add some light. So let's go Shift A and let's add a point light because that's going to create light in all directions, which is good, right? We want this to be brighter. So let's press G and move this over here and let's right click and adjust the light power. So now you can see we are getting more light in our scene and that's good, right? We wanted to illuminate our object. So here's how the other mindset comes into play. Let's view this from the side by pressing this widget and minus X. Let's reset the position of the light by pressing Alt G. And now let's try and move this so that it creates as much shadow as possible. And I want to see shadows here in the chest area. And I want to see shadows in the biceps area and the stomach. By the way, I forgot about this. This model is a little bit weird that it has this fake sharpening. So if you press tab to go to edit mode, you can press control E and clear sharp from vertices. So now it doesn't have any fake sharpness anymore and we can start really focus on the geometry here. So first of all, I think this part is way too flat. I can't really see what's happening on this chest. But if we have the mindset that we are going to add shadows instead, let's try and move the light on the Y axis and a little bit on the Z axis. And we're placing the light just above our character 
it's much easier to see and understand the shape of this character when you have these shadows that are emphasizing the shape of the object. So I want you to keep this in mind when you're adding lights to your scene. Don't try and illuminate your scene because it's too dark. Try and place the shadows strategically so you can emphasize the shapes of your object. Okay, so we're almost there. This is almost my favorite lighting setup. Let's go to Object Data Properties and let's select the light and let's set the type of light to be an area light. And now you can see we get a really hard shadow and that is because it's a smaller light. So you can right click and increase the light size. Okay, so now instead of watching this in 3D and moving the camera all the way around all the time, I wanna watch this from the camera perspective while I do the changes. So let's hold down Z and set this to solid view again. And let's right click on this line and set it to vertical split. And let's go here and you can press T to get rid of this menu. And now let's press the camera icon and then you can zoom in and let's turn off the overlays, which is Alt Shift Z. And also if you think this little button is annoying, you can go to the gizmos and turn off look at. So now let's set this to be the rendered view. Okay, so the scene is too bright. Let's right click on the light and adjust the light power. Let's lower it a little bit. Let's select the backdrop, select material properties, and let's add a new material backdrop. And let's just lower the base color. So this doesn't really have anything to do with the lighting. I just, I just like it. <laughs> okay, so I wanna increase the contrast in our scene a little bit. So let's go to the world properties and let's set the strength to zero. So this basically turns off the light in our world. So now let's go back to camera view. And now I wanna show you something that is a problem with this area light. Select the area light, right click and increase the power. You see this? There's this shadow, this line here at the side. It's because the area light is only emitting in 180 degrees. This is basically how the camera sees. It's going to see all the way up here. And this line is going to be here. So an easy way to fix this is to select this light and just rotate it. Let's turn on the brightness. But now the problem is that I think this is getting too flat again. So the lighting that I almost always end up with is to move it just behind. So now you can see we're getting these really beautiful soft shadows on the chest, for example, and you can see the biceps are being more visible and we get this really beautiful highlight on the shoulders. And that's the look I really like. And you might notice there are some artifacts here on the stomach and hair on the also stomach. I don't really know what this character is. To get rid of this, you can add a subdivision surface modifier. So let's just select this geometry and press Control one This automatically adds a subdivision surface modifier. And in the modifier properties, you can set it to render one and viewport one, if you like. So let's do a still render and see what it looks like. Render properties, I'm going to lower my amount of samples and I'll just do a still render. Okay, nice. I think this is looking quite smooth. I really like this lighting setup but I don't know why I'm liking it. And that's okay, you can like stuff and don't know why you like it. But in some cases, it can be extremely beneficial to try and figure out what did we do correctly here that can be applied in other scenarios. What if you want to recreate this lighting setup for everything? Because as I said, I use this for almost 80% of my work. So let's do some drawing. First, let's draw the point of view. So this is our camera. This is our focal plane. This is our point of interest. Let's give this an eye. And this is our background, which looks like this. And it's like a picture from the mountain. <laughs> and then if you like, you could also have like a foreground element, but we don't do that. So let's just not worry about that right now. So this is basically what we have created in this scene. We're going to break down what the light is doing here. And this is going to make it incredibly easy to create the same type of lighting in other scenes. Let's also add space. This, boop. So here you can see we have our point of view, we have our point of interest, and we have our background. And this can be divided into two parts. This is often referred to as outside. And this part is often referred to as inside. So when people talk about lighting from the outside, they are talking about what's happening between the background and the point of interest. It's this area. And the next time you are watching a movie on the cinema, which is a movie that hopefully has cinematic lighting since it's at the cinema, you'll notice that there is a very big chance that the light is placed in the outside. So this is almost like a gradient where over here it's mysterious and here it's being revealed. 
Let's try and see if this works. So I'm going to select the light and just press G and move it around. And I move it further into the outside. So now this character is completely lit from the outside and we end up with only a silhouette and it's looking quite mysterious. And then the closer we get, you can see now we're lighting it from the inside and it's being revealed. So if you were to place the light right here and point it towards the character, now this looks similar to when you're driving the car at night and your flashlights are lighting up a deer in the road and you can see the wet fur and you can see the teeth and you can see it like <laughs> If you were to say that that lighting is ugly, I would agree with you. But on the contrary, let's say you're in a cave. We want to make this into a point light. This is you and then the cave goes like this. This is the opening of the cave. So you're inside the cave. This would fit really well with a narrative that is mysterious. So now you can see that when the light is coming from here, you can only see a silhouette. But if instead the cave is the other way, like this, so it's closed here, and this is the opening of the cave, the sun is coming from outside the cave, and you can see that you are revealing everything that's inside the cave. I'm not sure <laughs> if this makes any sense at all. Okay, I'm getting really excited about this. Uh, <laughs> I'm almost... I think I'm just really excited to draw on this tablet. Okay, yeah, let's let's get back to Earth, I think. So, to summarize this, and to recap what we've done today, we have created a large light source above our point of interest. And we have learned that if we place our light closer to the background and further away from the point of interest, we are creating something that is more mysterious because we are losing information and we are really playing with the shadows. And then if we choose to place our light between the point of interest and the point of view, like this, now you can see that all is being revealed and we have a flat lighting. So this can be used if you want to reveal everything and just show that there are no secrets here. So to get back to my favorite lighting setup, it's just behind the point of interest, just right here, because then you get a little bit of light rays here. And you also get bounce light on the ground and then up again. And this goes a little bit like this, and it's really powerful in cycles. You can try this same lighting setup in Eevee, and you'll quickly notice that the bounce light in cycles is doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. And then the majority of the light comes here and lands smoothly on the shoulder and on the ground, and it's also bouncing like this. These are bouncing. And I think this, the shoulder light, is the most beautiful about this setup. It falls off really nicely, and it looks, it looks like a cape of light. Oh, by the way, we totally forgot, but this is actually still animated. So you can press play and you can see that it's an actually mocap animation. <laughs> so I guess I'll have to render it out and see what it looks like. So that's my favorite lighting setup. I will leave the blend file in the description. I'm not going to be allowed to distribute this mocap model, but you can just download it from Mixamo and import it to the scene and it should be placed perfectly where it's right now. And if you want to try and recreate it, I highly recommend that you just try and use one light source because that just keeps things so much simpler. As I said, I'm using this for almost everything nowadays. It's just one big light source and then it's often a large area plane tilted so that it won't create any ugly shadows on the background, especially when using a wide angle lens. This, this monitor is probably going to wiggle a little bit. I don't have a really big monitor, it's just that it's such a wide angle lens. <laughs> so if you watched any tutorials on this channel, you might have noticed by now that there is a difference between the tutorial result and the sort of cinematic that I show at the end. And the reason for this is super simple. Every time I record a tutorial, I just get so excited about the technique that I'm about to show everyone that I just spend a couple of days just doing whatever I can to make people understand how cool it is, you know, and make these cinematic shots. And my goal is to inspire with this, to show off the technique. But I also understand that it can be quite frustrating to not get to learn everything in the same video. So if you like this video, it's the first episode in a new tutorial series I'm working on called Virtual Cinematography, where we'll be doing virtual cinematography. It's a topic I'm just really, really excited about. The next episode is going to be about barrel distortion and fish eye lenses. So subscribe if you want to see that. Thanks for watching.